Welcome to Green Gotham. I'm Lou Blaustein, and we are in for an exciting half hour, as joining us is Kim Fracek, co-director of the Sane Energy Project, a nonprofit that is helping to move us away from a natural gas infrastructure and towards a renewable energy infrastructure. But even more than that, Kim is an anti-fracking activist and is a radical. So this is gonna be exciting. Kim, welcome to Green Gotham. Thank you. And so we have a lot to talk about, but to get started, I'd like to go back to how you got into radical politics be, and, and pushing for radical change. Um, well, I was a teenager and... Uh, when much of this will start. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I listened to punk music um, and uh, a lot of the, the folks that I hung out with in West Philadelphia were anarchists and a lot of them were, you know, elder anarchists and really um, taught me a lot about politics and really opened me up to a different way of living our lives outside of the system. And um, I got involved with learning so much just about like the natural world, learning how to cook different foods using natural medicines. Um, and, um, and then I met um, the, the, the MOVE group, um, the Africa family. And a lot of stuff that I had learned on television when I was a little kid in 1985 when they had bombed the MOVE house. I remember um, that. Yeah, like I had, you know, I was a little kid and so my notion of that was that they did something wrong and the house was on fire. I, you know, I was 10 when it happened. I, How could you think otherwise? Right, and then once I became, you know, 16 and had more critical thinking skills, I actually met um, Ramona and Sue Africa, and it was, uh, you know, I went to a lecture of theirs at the A Space, which is like an anarchist um, gathering space in West Philadelphia, and I heard their story, and all of a sudden, my mind was just blown. <laughs> really opened me up to understanding um, the radical nature, uh, the radical importance of changing the system. And when you think the system is broken, how how can you work within the system to change it? Is that possible? Well, I mean, we're all part of the system. So, um, you know, we all have to work, try our best to, to work within it to, to try to change it. Um, there, you know, there's many different tactics that, you know, you can use um, as an activist to try to make change in the system. Um, you know, most change in our world has happened because people stood their ground and said no. You know, civil disobedience uh, um, works. And that's, you know, really what actually makes change in the world. And so have you been doing that all along since that time? No. I mean, uh, you know, I ended up, like, going to college and falling asleep for a while and got, having a career in the fashion industry, designing jewelry and handbags. And, and then... Um, you know, I was doing very light activism with animal rights, um, but nothing, you know, that was really making any change. Um, and, you know, Occupy Wall Street started, and it just reinvigorated that energy that I felt in West Philadelphia um, when I was younger. And uh, it just snapped me back into, into the radical mode. And so how did that get, how did you get from... Occupy Wall Street mm -hmm. and animals to uh, anti-fracking and to Sane Energy Project. Um, well, I grew up in Pennsylvania. Um, Fracking capital. Yeah, there's a lot of um, injustice happening in Pennsylvania. Um, people can't use their water. People's homes are no longer, you know, um, valuable. Um, people's land is ruined. Uh, our farmland, where our food grows, is destroyed. Our rivers and streams are destroyed. Um, and people don't have a voice. People are being bullied by the gas industry. And there's nothing more that makes, nothing bigger that makes me angry than watching industry bully good people around. Which was shown in the movie Gasland to a certain extent. Sure, yeah. Josh's film was excellent. Uh, it really helped uh, to ignite a movement in, in um, our nation and the world. So did you get involved through, was... Did you get involved through the Pennsylvania anti-fracking movement? 
and then bring it here to New York? Well, I was living in New York City, and uh, Spectra Energy um, wanted to bring a fracked gas pipeline into uh, the West Village of New York City, and a bunch of us in Occupy sort of had caught wind of that, and we decided to get involved and, and, uh, and create a movement around that. Um, because most New Yorkers don't even know that this exists. Like, at the time, most New Yorkers did not even know what fracking was. So we definitely had to figure out our campaign was ranging everything from general education to notifying people that this was happening without their um, input, knowledge. Um, and, you know, that's a really big hurdle to climb. Um, Especially when the natural gas companies in the industry put these really kind of shiny and pretty uh, public service announcements and ads that talk, fracking is safe. Sure. What? You know, we're having an energy revolution, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And you have to combat that. Right. And without Yeah, I as mean, much we're money. up against multi-million dollar PR firms hired by one of the biggest industries on the face of the planet. Um, so it's a, it's a hurdle. Um, however, we have truth on our side, and you know, um, civil disobedience has historically worked. Um, and uh, yeah, so we had formed this movement um, around the Spectre pipeline, and I think we did a pretty good job of getting the neighborhood at least knowledgeable about it. Um, you know, a lot of members of our group had locked ourselves to equipment. Um, we shut down the West Side Highway with giant caution tape, um, notifying people what was going on. And, you know, it garnered some press, um, which was good. That's always good to help us get the message out. Um, but, you know, inevitably, that was back in 2013 when the pipeline went live. And, you know, 2011, 2012 was when we were really in the, in the, in the heyday of fighting it. Um, and we lost. The Spectre Pipeline is now live. Um, it actually, the vault of the Spectre Pipeline, is, which is where it connects to the Con Edison system, um, is in the basement of the new Whitney Museum of American Art. That is mind boggling. It's to mind me. blowing, especially when the Whitney is saying to the world, oh, we're this you know, new architecture, we are sustainable. You know, so we started a movement um, called the WhitneyPipeline.org, and we decided to call them out. And we will continue to put pressure on the board of directors until they have a public meeting with us. And we figured the best thing that we can do is have a discussion with them so they can start highlighting that we had to shut down gas infrastructure. Um, we, the knowledge that we do have of this is that Originally, a few members of the board uh, did not want to move the Whitney from the Upper East Side downtown. And there happened to, we still have to figure out where the pieces of the puzzle fit in here, but um, there was a generous donation from Bloomberg, Mayor Bloomberg, who's very, you know, big into conversions of our boilers to natural gas because he's very tied into the industry. Um, the Whitney received a large donation, and all of a sudden, all the board of directors were very thrilled to be downtown. So we are still trying to put those puzzle pieces together. Um, but in the meantime, we know that this is Have they a heard you issue. at least yet? I mean, they have heard us. They have definitely heard us. We were featured in the New York Times um, because of the large action that we did there with um, our friends at the Illuminator. Uh, we projected a giant movie on the side of the Whitney, and we had um, a, a ribbon cutting cool. opening before their main opening with the Gorilla Girls, which is another historical, amazing radical arts group um, talking about women in art museums. So, and, yeah. and I would think that the High Line, which is it's right there, mm -hmm. that because they're talking about natural beauty and, and, and nature, mm -hmm. that they would be on your, on your side. One would think. Um, the High Line is also very tied into the economics of the city um, and into the economic infrastructure of how the city is going to grow. Um, and, uh, you know, the natural gas industry is is very big. We ha we are going to have to figure out where to place our puzzle pieces moving ahead. I do know that from our fight here in the city, we have really helped to uh, teach and lay a pathway for others that are fighting large infrastructure projects in all over the region in New York State and New Jersey, like things that we learned, ways 
things that we learned from our losses, we've been able to share with them, um, and they've been able to grow a larger movement. And the movement's definitely growing. And I think that it's important to learn from your losses mm -hmm. because that's gonna sow the seeds for future wins. Absolutely. And so to me, what's really interesting about this is that you're focusing on natural gas. Mm -hmm. And to the public at large, even the public who thinks they are well-versed on green issues, mm -hmm. think, ah, coal, bad, natural gas, good. Sure. Oil, bad, yeah. natural gas, good. You know, it's Obama, all marketing. O it's Obama, you know, um, all of the above, bridge fuel to the future. But the dirty, really dirty little secret is fugitive methane uh, leaks when natural gas, in, in the process of burning natural gas. Maybe you could talk a little bit about mm -hmm. how bad natural gas is. Well, I mean, fugitive methane leaks is just one of several different issues. Um, I mean, the entire process of fracking from cradle to grave you know, uh, they are mining sand in the Midwest, and the the mining of this sand is so giant that it's, you know, blowing over towns, it's taking over towns. You know, the silica dust is blowing through schools, giving kids cancer. Um, you know, they're developing silicosis. And, um, you know, that's just one part. The, the you know, water. they're taking water from our rivers to, you know, each well needs two to eight million gallons of water for per fracking well, let alone, you know, mixing it up with the sand and a whole cocktail of chemicals that the law is on their side where they don't have to disclose those chemicals. Those are, and you know, what we have learned from testing is that, you know, there's some very serious cancer-causing chemicals in there that are seeping into our water. And so with all that said, mm -hmm. that's a perfect segue into mm -hmm. the Sane Energy Project sure. because, so the so-called good natural gas, the clean natural gas, mm -hmm. don't shoot the messenger, okay, <laughs> uh, is that's the infrastructure that's being built. You want to change that to a renewable energy Absolutely. infrastructure. And how do we get from A to B? Well, we're working on that. I mean, right now, um, there is a large growing network. Um, we mainly focus, um, St. Energy Project focuses on New York City and New York State. Um, you know, the, the infrastructure build out from the drilling in the Marcellus Shale in Pennsylvania um, coming through New York State as a conduit, um, so all this can be sent out for export to sell for the highest international bidder. Um, you know, I mean, the pipelines, the compressor stations, the waste dumps, we're taking uh, radioactive waste from the, the drilling in Pennsylvania and storing it in, in New York State. Um, all of this is beginning to uh, show what it is. People are getting poisoned, people are getting sick, um, and they're fighting back, and people are rising up. And we do know that there is alternatives. We do know that this region of North America is one of the most uh, vibrant places to build offshore wind. Um, we have uh, people who have made plans. Um, Professor Mark Jacobson from Stanford University has made an entire recipe for all 50 states on what each of the 50 states would need in order to go 100% renewable. Um, and it's not a pipe dream. I've seen that as well. I mean, it's, absolutely. it's gonna take some heavy lifting, mm -hmm. but it's, it takes it, change, and people but don't it's want to change. It's possible, and, right? And this is where us having to radicalize things has to come in, because people, you know, people don't want to see change. It's scary. Um, it, you know, you're going to have to do something different than what you're normally used to doing. Um, the policymakers are, are, you know, right now, NYSERDA uh, is really. NYSERDA our, is the new, just for the viewers, the New York State Energy Research Development Authority. So when you, when you pay your Con Ed or whatever your utility is, when you pay your utility bill every month, a small fraction of that goes to fund NYSERDA, which in theory is then uh, using that money to fund renewable energy and other clean tech, I say in theory, in theory, in theory clean tech projects. Now I sure. hand it over to Kim <laughs> to tell me where so I'm So the wrong. New York State Energy Plan um, is, is supposed to be uh, released. Um, um, this is now, you know, in, in early July, and, uh, um, you know, we've given our public comments on it. Uh, we want to see 
uh, our imagination and our energy, which we know we have, into putting renewable infrastructure in place. You know, a lot of the energy plan has glossy photos of, you know, wind turbines and uh, solar, solar panels. panels, but, you know, you look inside and the majority of it is natural gas build out. That's a problem. Um, we can't be using, um, you know, these pictures of renewable energy if we're not really going to walk the walk. And we have the ability. I mean, humans have built so many amazing public infrastructures. We, we can do this. And the only thing that we have standing in our way is Wall Street and, you know, shareholders and, you and know, inertia. fossil fuel industry that doesn't want to let go of its profits. Um, so, uh, and it's, it's, a, it's such a tough fight that it's almost like we can't actually work within the system anymore because the system is so rotten and corrupt that uh, it's impossible to really move them. So we're going to have to get together and, and move them for, for but, a future. But it seems like you, uh, I'm not saying you, but the, mm -hmm. the, the different groups in the movement mm -hmm. are at the same point while you're trying to build public movement and public anger and public ire mm -hmm. on this issue to get action. You're also working, trying to change things in Albany or trying to influence you know, uh, decisions by the governor or in other states as well to ban fracking. Mm -hmm. Now, and is that a real ban or is that a fake ban? We're not sure yet. No. But, so speak to that a little bit. Um, sure. Uh, working with um, electoral politics is one tactic of a larger goal. Um, our larger goal is to shut down shale gas infrastructure and move us to a renewable future where you know, our economy is run on tourism, organic farming, wine, wind power, wind generation, solar generation. Um, we actually can work towards that future. It's real. And, um, you know, so uh, there's several tactics that we can take to get there. Working with electoral politicians it's is just, just one of way of many. I would be remiss if I didn't, if I didn't uh, pivot and talk with you about Port Ambrose. Mm, yes. So just maybe give a brief tutorial on what that is sure. to the viewers and then where mm -hmm. Sane Energy Project is and what you're trying to do about sure. it. Sure. Well, to connect it back to what we were talking about with the sand mining and the drilling and the pipelines and compressor stations and waste dumps, the end game for all of that is uh, export facilities off our, off our coasts. Um, and uh, they want to take all this gas, uh, liquefy it by freezing it to negative 260 degrees so it's easier to ship. Um, they want to build a uh, Liberty Natural Gas, which is uh, a shell company owned by West Face Capital. Liberty Natural Gas. It right. sounds so mm -hmm. patriotic. Exactly. Um, they're actually a Canadian-based uh, company called West Face Capital that uh, does all of its banking and records in the Cayman Islands. So we have no knowledge of who their investors are. So already they're like a dodgy company. Right. Um, they are proposing to build a, uh, a, a liquefied natural gas port off the coast of the Rockaways, Long Beach, um, just 19 miles. Um, don't you see the irony in that? I mean, th this is the area that was buffeted by Sandy among the most. Sure, know? and absolutely. Here, and this is, and this is a place that's been affected by climate change, at least incrementally. Mm, most definitely. And now you're telling me that they're going to build this port in that place. Mm -hmm. Highly volatile. So, well, they're not going to because we're going to stop it. Yes. <laughs> Um, so we actually have a really nice groundswell of people that are angry about it. Um, everybody through the South Shore of Long Island and the Rockaways are absolutely against it. The New York City Council passed a resolution against it unanimously. Uh, the Long Beach City Council unanimously passed a resolution against it. Um, all the surfers are up, up in arms about it. Um, people who were affected by Sandy are up in arms about it. So we. We have a good groundswell to uh, to actually stop this, and uh, Governor Cuomo has it, has a position to veto it, um, and so we are. That's our that's our tactic for this is working with electoral politics um, in this way. Um, uh, so anyhow, the uh, LNG is like will be a, a giant pipeline that goes off our underneath Long Beach out 
out about 19 miles, and there will be two buoys floating out there where giant ships, um, anywhere between the size of the Empire State Building and the new Freedom Tower that's been built, um, will come in and these buoys will click into the ship and they will uh, fill up with gas, uh, liquefy it, and sail away. Uh, Liberty Natural Gas is applying for an import license right now, claiming that they're bringing gas to New York State from Trinidad and Tobago, which that is... is so bogus. Mm -hmm. I mean, we it are is. we want to export this stuff. Right. I mean, the that's that's their. I mean, there's no reason for us to be importing gas from Trinidad and Tobago when so much fracking is going on um, here on on um, you know in Pennsylvania. So. Uh, we're calling them out on that. They, you know, they have they have just stood by, you know, that they're applying for an import license because uh, after the process goes through, they can flip that to an export license without public input. So their their game plan they're is gaming the system is to game the system, which is what they do, and they want to export all of this fracked gas off the shore because Asia and Europe markets will pay, you know, six to ten times more money than the American market. And also, Liberty Natural Gas has a sister um, port to Port Ambrose called um, Port Meridian, yes. which is just off the coast of the UK, So, and which is also applying for an import license. So, I mean, they're setting it up. I mean, it's, it's just so obvious um, that this is what they're doing. And, you know, this is what has happened generations to countries all over the world where natural resources get stolen and it gets sold to the highest international bidder. So I'm not saying that this is a new story. It happens to be just a new story for, um, you know, Americans in this region of America. It's a new story that is still largely unknown mm -hmm. and still under the cover of natural gas is like, this is a good thing. Sure. And I... I mean, I think this story is one that really needs to be told mm -hmm. and delved into deeply, in, in, you know, in a documentary film or some such thing. Yeah. Because absolutely. I think this is a massive story. Mm -hmm. There is, a, I mean, there is already um, Cove Point down in Maryland has already achieved their export license. So they're, uh, you know, running a giant infrastructure, you know, build out right next to people's homes. Um, people moved to Lesby, Maryland to raise their families. It's a very small town. And, uh, you know, these, these giant uh, gas facilities are just opening up and it's just destroying their, 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 their families, their towns, their health. Their, you know, it's a, it's a real problem uh, when the industry is controlling our democracy. Well, I, and also when the government is not being the watchdog for the people. And so talk about FERC, <laughs> FERC. FERC. So FERC is the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Um, they are uh, who approve most of the uh, gas and oil infrastructure, interstate and in infrastructure projects in the United States. Um, they don't oversee Port Ambrose. The Maritime Administration, the Coast Guard do, which is how we've been able to actually be a little bit successful. Um, but FERC is absolutely just destroyed and poisoned by the gas industry. They make their uh, money off fees for each approval that they give. So they've approved 99.999% of all the gas their infrastructure. Incentive to, their inc uh, their, the incentives are messed up is the problem. Right. They're incented to do, they're doing what they should be doing given the incentives. Correct. So right now, I mean, FERC is uh, not working. I mean, it's, it's there to be some sort of a regulatory process, but they're not doing anything except helping to like grease the wheels for the gas industry to it, get through. So is Sane Energy Project fighting them? Yes, absolutely. We are part of a, a major part of a large coalition called Beyond Extreme Energy. So we've connected with all of our colleagues and allies um, all over the nation, um, particularly concentrated in the mid-Atlantic region and in, in New England, because uh, FERC is based in Washington, D.C., so sure. we're able to mobilize quickly and get to uh, FERC, and uh, so we've launched a campaign, um, you know, to shut FERC down, and um, I think, you know, it's it's going to be a large fight, but we will strategize in order to figure out how to shut them down, because they're a bottleneck of the natural gas industry, and so... The incentives needs to change. That's, that's, they need to be incented to 
to be an honest arbiter, not to sure. approve stuff. That's what really needs to exactly. change. Now, we only have a couple minutes left, mm -hmm. and I would love to, one aspect of what Kim does <laughs> is she brings art into this into her fights. Sure. So could you just share with the audience a little bit about that? Sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm an artist. Uh, you know, I worked as a designer for a long time, but I went to art school um, and- uh, And a puppeteer. I, I, yep, I, funny, uh, in, uh, during, um, during my time in West Philadelphia, I met some uh, radical puppeteers who made giant puppets and, and they were amazing. They're still based in um, Philadelphia. Um, and then when Occupy Wall Street started, all the artists and theater people all sort of like found each other somehow and started an arts and culture working group. And the, the People's Puppets was one of the, the groups that came out of that. And so uh, we've, we still work together uh, twice a week and we build uh, giant art to explain com complicated narratives. So we'll build you know, giant storybooks, giant puppets, put on shows out into the public square um, and one thing that I've really been able to uh, blossom with is building giant blockade art that is narrative. So people can see that, uh, you know, what's going on. It tells the story um, at why we're standing there, why we're protesting. It helps to de-escalate the public. It helps to de-escalate law enforcement. Um, people realize that we're there as just simple people with a story to tell of injustice. And art has been a wonderful way to tell that story. And uh, so we'll, we'll build art that will block, you know, um, you know the, the entrance to FERC, for instance, with a well, giant portrait of a family that is being injured by gas infrastructure. Well, I'm sorry for the family, but glad for the art. And you know mm -hmm. what? What we're going to do is... I'm going to invite you to share some of the art with us okay. on our Facebook page. Yeah, sure. And I want to thank you for being an amazing guest. And, you know, now I'm, I'm ready to be radicalized. Okay. Thank you for watching, and see you again next time on Green Gotham.